Good day to everyone. This day we are going to talk on the history of computers. To start with, let us first define the different objectives that each of you must be, must be able to attain by the end of this lesson. First, you should be able to identify and describe the three main types of devices developed in the history of computers. Well, there are totally different types of devices developed in the history of computers, and each of these will be classified into three major types of devices. Whether it could be manual mechanical, electromechanical, or it could be an electronic devices. Now at present, what do you think is our type of computer? Is it manual mechanical, electromechanical, or is it an electronic device? Then next, is you, should be, you should be able to describe some of the inventions and whether and you should be able to identify their inventors in the history of computers. So these lessons are anchored in these different learning objectives that each of you must be able to attain by the end of this lesson. Well, for to start with this lesson, make sure you have with you these materials. You should have with you your lecture notebook to take down notes, your assessment notebooks to answer our learning activities and learning probe. Then you should have with you a black ball pen and an immediate paper to answer the learning tasks and learning applications. So to start with, uh, let me ask you this question. Now this activity is actually designed for you to identify some devices invented under the history of computers. So you have to use your assessment notebook to answer this part. So don't you worry if you don't get the correct answer because we are going to answer them as we proceed with our lesson. Well, this uh, I want you to identify these objects, whether they are and a basic computer, a step reckoner, arithmetic engine, abacus, or a difference engine. Number one, number one, uh, numbers one and two are presented in the slide. I want you to answer whether, uh, what object is this? We have also number three, number four, and we have number five. Well, for our learning probe, now this activity is actually intended for you to enumerate the possible reasons on why these devices and equipments have been invent invented. So you have to make use of your assessment notebook to answer this part. Now what do you think is are the reasons why people invented these devices? Those devices mentioned in our previous activity. What could be its possible reason for these inventions? And again, I want you to answer these questions in your assessment notebook. Now, let us now start with our discussion proper. Now, studying the history of computer is extremely useful in evaluating the impact and leading to even more advanced technologies. Thus, when you study the history of computers, you will be able to develop more sophisticated technologies in the future. And thus, the history or the historical records of our data shows that man has invented three types of devices to assist him in our data processing whether it could be manual mechanical electromechanical or it could be an electronic devices now when you say manual mechanical these are the devices which are mainly powered by hand so which means to say class that they are not using any type of machine for these devices to get into work. They can perform calculation through the use of our own force. They are mainly powered by hand. That's what you call as your manual mechanical. Then things are getting more uh, complicated and are more advanced as compared to manual mechanical. So from manual mechanical, the electromechanical type of devices has been developed wherein it uses electric motor and it uses switches and relays. So from, from machines which are mainly powered by hand, it now makes use of electric motor. So there is, an, the, there is a rotating device, which is the electric motor, which is used to provide electric current to make a device work. So they are now more advanced as compared to manual mechanical. Because manual mechanical doesn't operate on the concept of electricity. But electromechanical, it now operates with the use of electricity 
So this was the use of switches and relays using your electric motor. Then from your electromechanical device, here comes your electronic devices, wherein these electronic devices are made up of electrical and electronic components. So in your electromechanical, there are these moving parts, okay? So to perform a calculation, it uses an electric motor for it to move parts to perform computation. Now if you could analyze or trace the advancement of technology from manual mechanical which are plainly powered by hand to perform computation, next here comes your moving parts to perform computation instead of using their manual labor to perform computation is that we make use of electric motor to move parts in order, in order to perform computations. And then from using the electric motor, it consists of different moving parts. So you could imagine how slow an operation will be if you use these moving parts and how noisy it could be. It could just like uh, turning on your engine from your car. And then we have your electronic devices, which are now electric motors have been removed. There are no moving parts and are now replaced with electronic components. So right now, our generation or the generations of computer that we are now using are what we call your, are already part of your electronic devices, which is are made up of electrical and electronic components. Now, let us understand what are these devices developed. So earlier, we talked on how are these devices being classified. Okay, it could be manual mechanical. If they are mainly powered by hand, it could be a electromechanical if there are moving parts. And it could be an electronic device if it now consists of electrical and electronic components. Now, let us start with the first invention to aid human being to perform computation and it is not it is and it is now what you call your abacus your abacus is developed in the early 12th century now uh, talking bef but long before the abacus was invented man uses shells stones and even fingers to perform computation okay so we make use of shells, stones, and our fingers. And even now, in our elementary days, we could remember how we perform computation by just using our hands, like addition, subtraction, as well as multiplication. We make use of our hands to perform these computations. And that was the basic idea of performing computation. Uh, it is manual. And then early computing devices were all manual mechanical devices and were used as data processing equipment due to lack of electricity and adequate industrial technology. So that's the problem. Why uh, long before? Elect uh, electricity is not yet invented. Hence, all these computing devices are mainly powered by human hand or manual labor. Then this the um, abacus is an example of a manual mechanical device. Okay, so here's how your abacus looks like. Okay, it consists of beads which can be moved to perform computation. And it is the first computing device used to perform simple arithmetic calculations. And again, it is originated and developed in China. As we have known, class Chinese are good merchants okay since uh, they are good mathematicians at the same time hence the device abacus to aid computation to make their computation more easier and faster as compared to manually using different devices then here comes also your abacus which is known for its simplicity and its effectiveness so these are the main reasons why abacus has been employed they are developed in China, and they are known for its simplicity and effectiveness. Now, then, another, another example of a manual mechanical device is what we call your logs and bones. It was developed in the year around 1617. 
Now, so here's how your lugs and bones looks like. Lugs and bones were actually developed or discovered by Jean Napier or Sir Jean Napier. Okay, this is also known as your Napier's bone. So the use of lugs reduced a problem in subtraction. So the sticks were called bones were used to perform both multiplication and division. And this was invented by Sir Jean Napier, who is a Scottish mathematician and an astronomer. Then right after your uh, right after your lugs and bones, in the year 1642, the arithmetic engine has been developed. Okay? So here's how your arithmetic engine looks like. And it is the first successful manual mechanical calculating machine. So take note that take note that this is still a manual mechanical calculating machine. It is not powered by electric motors or electricity, but it is plainly powered by human hand. Okay? It can perform addition and subtraction up to eight digits. And it is also known as your Pascal's calculator, sometimes also known class as Pascalin, which is named after its inventor, who is Blaise Pascal, a French mathematician. Then in the year 1823, the difference engine has been developed. Uh, difference engine class, it is now an uh, electromechanical device. Okay? So upon the discovery of electricity, and long before developing the modern electronics, the electromechanical devices were now invented and it's, and it's widely used in complex circuits, which includes electric typewriters and up to the complexity of the electromechanical digital computer. So there are some examples of your electromechanical devices. So first is what we call your difference engine, which again developed in the year 1823. So here's how your difference engine looks like. So again, it consists, since this is an electromechanical device, it consists of moving parts. So there are moving parts in this difference engine to perform computation. And they are again powered by electric motors, which uses switches and relay, just to perform computation. So a difference engine, it is a calculator, which can compile accurate navigational and artillery tables and it was invented by Charles Babbage who is a British mathematician which is which design device and completed in completed it in the year 1854 okay so that's your difference engine then from the difference engine the, ana the analytical engine also comes into play okay in the year 1835. So analytical engine was the first general computer powered by motor because again this is an electromechanical device, electromechanical, so it is powered by electric motor which can perform all mathematical computation. So it is now more advanced because it follows the MDAS rule, the multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction it is more advanced as compared to the previous inventions of electromechanical and manual mechanical devices okay is the perform it cannot perform all the four basic mathematical operation and it was invented by charles babbage who is the forerunner of modern computers now take note class that charles babbage is not a so-called the so-called as the father of modern computers now this engine's concept is the same as the modern computers because it contains the memory or the storage and the mill so this analytical engine has two major components which are the storage and the mill or the memory and the mill which is more of course similar to our present day computers our computers nowadays it consists of memory and a processor. So in this analytical engine, the memory is responsible for holding all possible numeric variables and the results of all previous computations. So when, we, uh, when this device performs computation, it is stored in your memory of your analytical engine. And to perform the computation, it is the work of your 
uh, mill to process data, which is now equivalent to the present day computer's microprocessor. So to perform again, to perform computation, it uses the mill. And to store data, the, anal the analytical engine uses your memory or what you call your storage. So hence with this concept, our modern day computers are built. Okay? So it was again Charles Babbage is the father of modern computers. Then here comes Lady Augusta Ada Byron. So what is your role in the history of computers? What do you think? Alright? Well, as you have known in our previous discussion or previous uh, slides, we have known class that many of these mathematicians were males, right? Then her comes Lady Augusta Ada Byron. So what is her role? Now, Lady Augusta Ada Byron was actually the assistant of Charles Babbage. Okay? She was assistant of Charles Babbage in this development of his analytical engine. So with that, since the analytical engine can perform data computation, it was through the use uh, it was it was because of Lady Augusta Ada Byron, who is the first computer programmer and the Countess of Lovelace. So Lady Augusta Ada Byron helped Babbage in the design of analytical engine. So take note class that again your uh, your analytical engine consists of memory and the mill. So memory for storing data and the mill to process data. So in order for this engine to get into work, it needs an instruction. These instructions were of course created by Lady Augusta Ada Byron, who is the first computer programmer. So when we say computer programmer, these are individuals who create instructions for the computer to work. Okay? It tells the computer what to do. So these are computer programmer. So this set of instructions are referred to as software. A single instruction that is what we call a program. Software is a set of instructions. So it was Lady Augusta, uh, it was Lady Augusta Ada Byron who helped Babbage in the design of his analytical engine. And with her understanding on the analytical engine enabled her to create instruction routines that could be fed into the computer. And the United States Department of Defense honored Byron's computer programming accomplishments in the year 1979 to 1980, which created or which named a high level programming language known as ADA. Okay? ADA classes is still a programming language. Okay? Uh, it was named after Lady Augusta Ada Byron in her honor. So take note, class, that it was not. Lady Augusta Ada Byron, who developed and created the Ada programming language. Okay, again, it was not Lady Augusta Ada Byron who developed or created your Ada programming language. It was just named after her as an honor given by the United States United States Department of Defense. Okay, it was just named after her. So don't get confused that it was not Ada Augusta Byron who created and developed the Ada programming language. It was just named after her as the first female computer programmer. Okay? Then in the year 1984, uh, sorry, the, the year 1884, the punch card tabulating machine has been released and was invented by Dr. Herman Hollerith. Okay? This was his, uh, the picture of Herman Hollerith with his invention, the punch card tabulating machine. Okay? So what is this punch card tabulating machine all about? Now, it is an electrically, and it is again an electrically operated card reader. It is also a tabulating sorter machine used in encoding data through a series of punch holes. And it was the first commercially Successful data processing machine invented by Dr. Herman Hollerith. And his invention enabled the U.S. Bureau of Census to speed up its headcount tabulation for the 1980, for the 1890 census. So the invention class of the punch card tabulating machine speeds up the process if 
especially as a process of head count. Okay, so long before we have census, but then again, it, it is quite uh, tasking. It, uh, it requires much time, uh, not much time to perform this census. So with this invention of punished cartabulating machine, the process is now speeding up. Okay, and thanks for for the invention of Dr. Herman Hollerath, which is the punch card tabulating machine. Then in the year 1931, the Z1 computer has been developed. It was invented by Konrad Zuss. Okay. Now, the Z1 computer was the first program-controlled computer in the world. So, it was the Konrad Zuss, it was Konrad Zuss who invented this invention who is a German inventor whose work leads a series of machine built by Siemens Corporation. So it started with Z1 at ended and ends up with Z4. So it is now a series of improvements to the Z1 computer. So it has the essential ingredients of modern machines that use the binary system and today's standard separation of storage and control. Then in the year 1939, the ABC computer has been developed. So ABC stands for Atanasov Berry Computer. It was named after its inventor, who are John Vincent Atanasov and Clifford Berry. So your ABC computer stands for again Atanasov Berry Computer, and named after its inventor, who are John Vincent Atanasov and with the help of Clifford Berry. Uh, this ABC has never been completed, but this, but the idea of creating this ABC computer laid the foundation on the development of ENIAC, or what you call your electronic numerical integrator and calculator. Okay, it was still a, an improved version of your ABC computer. So through the concept of ABC computer, the ENIAC has been developed. Then again, it is already powered by electricity and consists of vacuum tubes. Okay. Now, it was the first computer designed to find solutions of systems involving linear equations. So, linear equations class, it only makes use of a single variable. So, in your algebra class, you learn these linear equations uh, from this subject or from your algebra class. Then, in the year 1944, Mark I has been released. And it was the first general automatic, uh, it was the first automatic general purpose digital computer which can perform about three mathematical operations per second. So, it is now faster, okay? It is now, it can now perform faster operation knowing that it can perform three mathematical operations per second. It was now more advanced as compared to the previous inventions of computer. And its official name is Automatic Sequence Controlled Calculator, or what they call as ASCC. And it was developed at Harvard University by Howard Eichen with his graduate students and engineers from IBM. So it was the Harvard University who are the pioneering uh, university for development of your Mark I computer led by Howard Icahn with his graduate students. Then her comes Dr. Grace Mori Hopper. So what is her in uh, what is her contribution in the field of history of computers? Does anybody here know her contribution? Okay. Now Dr. Grace Mori Hopper was the first to discover the first computer bag. Okay, what is this bag all about? Now, it was actually, there was a moth found in the wires of Mark I computer making it to behave inappropriately or the Mark I computer malfunction. And it was through her curios uh, curiosity that she tried to open up the casing or she tried to open up the Mark I computer and found a moth which wrapped on its wire. And upon removing it and upon removing the moth, the Mark I computer now works 
unexpectedly. Therefore, uh, in today's computing, when we say bug, these are actually errors. Errors causing a program to malfunction. It was, uh, it originated from that concept that there was a moth which causes the computer to behave inappropriately. So that is the, the term bug. So the moth now relates to the term bug. So after removing that bug, the computer now works ex un unexpectedly. So when you re by, by removing that bug in the field of programming, we call that one as debugging. So bug in terms of programming, these are errors in a program which causes uh, which causes it to behave inappropri inappropriately. And once you remove these errors, we term that one as debugging or fixing of errors, so that the program can now work the way you program it. So her contribution was again, uh, she was the first to discover the computer bug. And it was through this concept that the term bug and debugging has been created. Bug, it is an error in a program. And debugging, it is the process of fixing errors in a computer program. And today, bug refers an error in a computer program. And debugging is the process of fixing and removing errors in a computer program or device. So... Very simple contribution, but it led to a landmark in the history of computers. Just by removing the moth, and her name is now part of the history of computers. Who knows that you might have your name written in the history of computers with your contribution in the future. Well, in today's video lecture, we have discussed the different uh, inventions pioneering to our present day and modern day computers and again we need to study this lesson so that we will understand how are or what are these devices and how do how are they able to develop these devices so that by understanding the past we will be able to create um new and more advanced computers in the future who knows that in the future you will be able to develop more advanced computers than what we have now today. Okay, thanks for joining me in today's video lecture and see you class in the next lesson on the generations of computer. Thank you and have a good day.